updating the firmware on the GRX8, you can do this with the STK, which is a USB device that plugs into a Windows computer. Uh, I've had lots of headaches with the STK with the drivers, and you have to be Houdini with trying to get the timing right to get this to see the receiver. Um, then I found out it's much easier to update the firmware directly from your transmitter. So I have a, an X10S and it's so easy to do with this. Why bother with Windows? It's not worth it. What you do is you go around to the back, pull this rubber boot off. There's a servo connector here. They give you this lead with the receiver and it has a little Fitaba tail on it here so that you get it correctly into the back of the transmitter. You can see the tail, it's on the left side. So just plug that in and then plug that into the connector on the top of the receiver. Go around to the front, pick the system menu, then tab over to the, the card. Now, I did skip a step here. You need to download the firmware with your computer. It could be Windows, Mac, whatever you got. Once you have the firmware file on your desktop or laptop computer, copy it to your transmitter, which is going to go on your little micro SD flash card. You can pull the card out and stick it in your computer directly or transmit it to your transmitter if you'd like. However you want to do that, that's a computer skill that you'll have to learn, but it's pretty straightforward if you have any folder type skills with copying files back and forth. Then you would go to the firmware directory, press enter. In this case, that's the name of the file that I downloaded from FreeSky. I put a date on the file so I know when I, what version it is. Anyway, you press enter, press enter again, and now you wait. It doesn't take too long. If it doesn't work right, you'll get a, an error message. If it works right, you don't get any sort of a message. It just goes back to the screen. Okay, so it's almost done. And if it comes back to this menu, that means there was no problem. If you have a problem, you'll get a, a screen. It won't give you much of a clue as to what the problem is, but you at that point you'll have to figure it out. I one time got that error. All I did was shut the transmitter off, turn everything back on, did it again, and I didn't get the error. So I would recommend that if you do get an error message there. But this method is much easier than dealing with Windows and downloading and installing USB drivers on your computer and then playing this timing game trying to get this STK to see the receiver. It's kind of tricky. This is not tricky. It's really simple. And what's nice is the firmware is now on your transmitter. So if you're at the field and uh, a friend needs a, a firmware update on their receiver, you've got them in the transmitter. You can do it at the field. No Wi-Fi is needed. So it, it's really a, a very neat feature.